Okay, I'm gonna hit go. Ready? Ready for it? I am ready. Your event is starting! And we're live! Welcome, guys, to the Wednesday night live stream. We got Mr. Mark Levinson on. I'm sure. I'm sure many of you guys know him. He also is an awesome YouTuber and pro acrylic manufacturer, since that's the topic of the day. How are you doing? How are you doing, Mark? Howdy, y'all! Howdy! <laughs> I always say y'all since I'm in Texas. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wore a special shirt just for this event. Let's see. What shirt are you wearing? <laughs> nice. I like it. It's the home wrecker. It is the home wrecker. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? Got it a reef of Palooza. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was I just got the, got the reef dude shirt today. <laughs> You're always branding yourself. You're such a professional. Yeah, sorry. Well, I, I'm up to like five shirts. I have three more in the mail of my new ones that I ordered. So I'm, I'm just waiting for them to show. I ordered them before Macna, and I don't think it lost in the mail or what. So I still haven't received them. So now they're finally, they reshipped them. One that says, me loves Reef. I'm just trying to make sure you're branding me. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. I'll wear yours and you wear mine, okay? We'll swap. No, I just want me to <laughs> We'll work on that one day. Uh, Nasty and Eva, welcome to Facts. Good day, Reefer G-Day exclusive. Kyle, Reef Keeper, Reef Road, Hank Hill, welcome guys. I Reef, Jeff Peterson, a bunch of people in the chat already. Hopefully everyone's having a fantastic Wednesday. So, Mark, you actually I have a question for you first before you get into this. What made you start, want to start building stuff out of acrylic? <laughs> I started uh, working with acrylic because I didn't like what they charged at the fish store. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it wasn't intentional. What had happened was they showed me a little acrylic box, and they wanted $100. And yeah. this was 19 years ago or something, and I thought, 100 bucks. I mean, back then, that was a lot of money. Yeah. So I just thought they were out of their mind for a piece of plastic. <laughs> so I went to the acrylic store near me and got a little bit of glue and a little bit of scrap acrylic, and I spent about $17 to build what I needed. <laughs> nice. So that, that was your first start, and then you're like, oh, I can do a little better, make it a little fancier, and just kept growing from there? You know, I was just kind of doing it for me, and then people, and then I went from making an overflow box, which is mm -hmm. a weird thing called a weir, and I decided to make a sump underneath, and I made everything out of eighth inch acrylic. <laughs> oh, that's thin. <laughs> so I had this big sump made out of eighth inch, and everyone was telling me, that's going to blow out, it's never going to hold. They did not know how good I am at glue and stuff because I used to build houses and yeah. I built from the foundation to the roof. And so when it came to gluing and bonding, I was like, yeah, I got this. And that thing never failed. It ran for a year. And then finally, I bought some quarter inch acrylic and made a much nicer version. Nice. But it's funny because the stuff I made way back then, and we're talking 2001, I guess, 2002, mm -hmm. the acrylic was quarter inch, but my edges were razor sharp. Because I would just run a router, trim off the excess. I didn't round it over. I didn't sand it. I mean, you just couldn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> just don't breathe on it. It'll hold. So, so did one you... of my customers that would get stuff said, it's really sharp. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So if you use an eighth inch, that seems really thin to hold a bunch of water. Very yeah. trusting. Did you have a lot of baffles in there to kind of bridge it all over the place? or? No. <laughs> I had a couple of baffles. <laughs> I always put the top rim. I feel the flange is important, obviously. Yeah, fair. And then, you know, I'd say about, what, two years later, I made an even bigger sump for my 55 gallon out of eighth inch again. <laughs> You're brave. <laughs> and the pictures are on my website. You can actually see this thing. And mm -hmm. it lasted for a good long time. Then, like I said, eventually I did finally decide to get some quarter inch. And I made the sump for the 29 gallon. I made the sump for the 55 gallon. And it was really nice by comparison. It was twice as thick. Yeah. It lasted, you know, until I broke the, those tanks down to set up the 280. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. And, and it was at that, that point. And this is kind of a funny period because, you know, I was cleaning floors for a living. I wasn't building acrylic for money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I got paid, but I wasn't, you know, it was my income. Yeah. And people come over and say, oh, so you make sumps. I want you to make me a sump. And they look at my eighth inch sump and they're just like, is it going to look like that? I'm like, no, no, you're, that's just mine. Ignore it. Yours is going to be so much nicer, I promise, you know, <laughs> which is hilarious. That's awesome. Well, I'm thoroughly impressed that that eighth inch acrylic held up for so long. Um, just before it scrolls away, Acid yeah. Burrito is asking, does acrylic break down in water over time? It does not. It is inert, and that's actually one of the best reasons, reasons to use it for all kinds of aquarium products. It's not going to affect your water at all. That's right. Um, actually, another question. Does UV affect it over time? Since I know it's very heavy in a lot of our tanks. Uh, especially uh, extruded could have some effect. Ozone even more so. Yeah. 
a UV, you know, you, it depends on who made it because there are different brands of acrylic. They're not all equal, mm -hmm. but usually what we're, we're thinking about is cast acrylic versus extruded. And yeah. cast is the one you want for when you start hitting it with things like ozone and UV. Okay. So actually, what are the main differences between cast and extruded? Cast is poured and extruded is stretched. Okay. So what you, the difference is cast is going to be stronger and it's going to have better clarity. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much, and it costs more. Of course. It costs yeah, that makes more. sense. The good stuff always costs more. Yeah. And all <laughs> I use at this point is cast and yeah. it costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Right. We talked earlier today and you asked what does acrylic cost and I'm buying four by eight sheets and there are companies that are buying in bulk. Yeah. They're probably buying like a one year supply and they have a mountain of acrylic. I don't have space for that. So I'm getting my five or seven sheets at a time, you know, every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And my sheets of a quarter inch acrylic, and everyone's going like, oh, I can get you a better price. You know, I'm happy with my supplier. So don't even bother. <laughs> but, you know, last, and the other thing about acrylic is the price changes like gasoline. I don't know if that's a problem in Canada, but in America, the cast changes all the time. Yeah. The day. And so the last time I ordered acrylic, it was $146 a sheet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cheaper. I think here I was talking the the deal price of someone else that I know buys like six or seven sheets at a time. I think he was paying like two twenty ish. If I walked in, they'd probably charge me four hundred. So it just depends. Like different suppliers you have like a bargain bin you can reach into and grab pieces. You yep. might need a small project, but when you're trying to do something bigger, or like if you watch the King of DIY channel, you know he yep. makes these aquariums himself, and he's buying slabs of acrylic, and he's not going to be getting bulk discount because he's just getting four pieces or or you know. They might even be pre-cutting it. Mm -hmm. he... Exactly. Uh, quick question in the chat. Uh, thinking of making an ATO container, 14 inch wide, 14 tall, 2 foot high. Do I need to brace the top and bottom? Brace the top and bottom? Well, it's going to have a top, so... You would have a lid. So, yeah. No, not just a lid, but like a, a flange. Yeah. Like all my stumps. Always put a top rim, and then there's no bracing the bottom. You're just gluing the bottom on. So, mm -hmm. if you do a good job with the glue and you don't have bubbles, then it will hold together. The two feet high thing, what happens is the more vertical your project goes, the thicker your material must become. Or you're going to see all the walls bulge outward from the mm -hmm. center. Yeah. Now, is there any general rule for knowing at what height you need to go to the next level of thickness? I mean, it probably depends on the volume and everything else. But There's calculators online that uh, you can reference, and they will tell you if you want to go you know, six feet long and you want to go... 12 inches high, you need this thickness. If you want yep. to go 18, you need this thickness. You go 24, you go 30, you go 40, you go 48. Mm -hmm. That will affect the thickness of the walls. And usually what I do is I call someone else and say, well, how much do you use <laughs> going to size? Because I never bother with calculators because I focus on sumps and top-off containers. I don't make display tanks. Display tanks, of course, have to be, number one, they have to have museum-quality seams. Mm -hmm. and they have to be, uh, I mean, all they have is four walls and a top and a bottom. So it has, I mean, very strong. If it's bonded properly, it's going to last a long time. I have seen very scary, poorly built tanks full of water. <laughs> yeah. I have all this experience, and I still don't make display tanks. And the main reason is because, well, I mean, in the back of my skull, there's a whole liability. If mm -hmm. it fails, I don't yeah. want to get screwed. You know I mean? Forget the whole, the carpet got wet or the baseboards or the sheetrock. What about all that high-dollar livestock? That, and then they want to blame me. I'm like, hey, I just built your tank. You know, I can't guarantee what happens a month from now, let alone a year from now, with your house. Whether the foundation shifted, your tank was never level, mm -hmm. the stain was strong enough, or the boards were, you know, collapsing with the moisture. And there's a lot to come into play. Mm -hmm. So I focus on everything goes down underneath. It's Well, it's a big liability. And I mean, personally, I always prefer to overkill absolutely everything just to never have an issue. Yes. Yep. So, okay, tons of cool stuff. Um, I mean, I've never built a sound for anything crazy like that. Most of the stuff I built is like mounting equipment like doser racks and actually that might be a good one for you if you want to throw it up i had i made one that would like a basically like an l-shaped angle kind of doser rack that i had on my magnetic sound i've had a few people ask me about it now so it might be a good product for you to throw on your site oh yeah i'll send you a picture <laughs> later i've had a few people ask me to make or sell one but you're, okay. you're, you're the, that's more your world to do that one i just build random stuff for my, my one tanks, of the but... things that i don't do is i don't copy other people's projects mm -hmm. i don't copy other people's manufactured items. So if somebody says, hey, I want a sump that looks like trigger systems, well, then I tell them call, call trigger systems. <laughs> yeah. you know, I want it to look like this, and I'm like, I don't copy people. Mm -hmm. Well, I want this layout just like that company. I was like, <laughs> again, talk to them company. I, mean, I understand there are going to be some similarities, mm -hmm. but when someone blatantly copies your work, yeah. I have a problem with that. And I had one company blatantly copy mine, and they were at Magna. 
And I looked at it and I'm like, that is my Model F sump. And he says, well, I use blue acrylic. I was like, are you kidding me? And I just walked away. I was so disgusted. Just the color doesn't change it. <laughs> he later on told me uh, that he never sold it again. And he apologized. And I was like, Fair okay. Enough. I was just like, I mean, it, it's literally my project. And while it's on my website and it teaches, I've told people copy it. But I'm talking about people with like a glass box and they put in baffles. Mm -hmm. Or if they really want to build their own, I get it. But for a nice manufacturer to make exactly what I make, yeah, that's... That's no bueno, and I don't do it. I don't do theirs. I don't copy theirs. But I do have some projects next to me that I thought I could hold up and show you that Sounds were made. Cool. I would love to see some. So we'll start with something very basic. How about a skimmer stand? So this is a very old one. Matter of fact, I need to think, throw it on my website in the WYSIWYG area. Uh, my new skimmer stands always have rounding corners right here, so it's not so to the point. I do bevel over the top, so it's got a nice curved surface. Mm -hmm. It's always a glued leg. A lot of people ask for adjustable legs, but the bottom line is, if you know the height your skimmer needs, you're never going to adjust it ever again. Very so true. I just say, just tell me what you need. If you need to be 10 by 10 or 8 by 9, and if you want to be 3 inches tall or you want to be 1 and a half inch tall, I will make exactly what you need, and it will be reliable, and you'll have it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. That's the skimmer stand. Yep. Then, uh, this is just an example of a fan tray. And I make these to sit on the hmm. on a sump. Actually, it sits this direction on a sump, you yep. know, the front and the back. And I notch it so that way it will sit on the walls and it cannot side to side slide. Nice. But it yes. will drift across the top. So you can actually have your fans in there, but you need to get to that part of your sump. You slide it over, mm -hmm. work in here, and slide it back to its favorite spot. Perfect. This one holds 120 millimeter fans. I also make an 80 millimeter fan tray for the occasional person that has smaller fans. It's actually amazing how much cooling you can get out of just a PC fan. Like it actually goes a long way if you guys have heating issues for evaporative cooling. What I use for my fan. Yep. But then I made a frag rack and people say, oh my God, you make frag racks. Like I make this kind of frag rack. Again, sort of like the skimmer stand. Yep. It holds all the frag plugs. It's the right size, which is nice. And a nice rounded corner. That's what I was talking about before. Looks good. Over so it's not sharp and <laughs> this actually was a mistake <laughs> I, was yeah. i mean it's perfect but i had to make one for a customer and you program the machine to cut all the holes yeah so it cuts the inside of each hole mm -hmm. bum, 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 bum. then it has to cut the outside of this wall all the way around right yeah and when it was going through the steps of the code i had made a mistake and i accidentally highlighted some of the circles mm -hmm. and so it's doing the outside of each circle and making brrr, ginormous holes and so i basically didn't touch it left the machine i told the machine stop and then i made this one narrower just mm -hmm. so i could still get a frag rack nice, which nice. again this will probably go on my website in the WYSIWYG area just to get rid of it because it's been sitting here for months nice. Nice. looks good i invented this a long time ago uh this is the floater it just floats the cell phone one? a little dirty or the look down one Yep. Yes, it's a look down box, but you can use it to put your phone in. That so, works great for top down photos. I think I chose my phone. Oh, there it is. Yes, exactly. So you can take your phone, you can just set it in there, and you'll take your pictures of your reef, you know, straight down, which is mm -hmm. awesome. And you can also, I make one wall clear intentionally because sometimes your corals grow so high you cannot put it there because there's an acro right here or it's too mm -hmm. close. So I put it this way where your lens is ah. looking out and you can back up and film the side of your coral right inside the tank. Very cool. Also, the bottom of this box has legs, which mm -hmm. is so that way when you put it down the table, this part doesn't get scratched. Yep. And that's one thing no company has stolen from me yet, which I'm very happy about. I do like that. That's <laughs> awesome. all like glue feed or whatever. I'm like, this has been my trick for... That is a very good trick. 10 years or longer. Then, I this is an example of something I didn't sell. Uh, you can see these round circles. This is for mm -hmm. Vortec drivers. Yep. And this nice. one, I, actually, I, it wasn't I didn't sell it. It's that I thought I needed two of these, and I only needed one. I usually make a single or a double. Yep. Occasionally, someone asks for a triple, and this guy asks for a quad. So how, four, how much Vortec would one things. sell that? Like, how much would you sell that for? Uh, I think it was, like, I don't remember, 30 bucks, maybe? Okay. 30 bucks, I don't know, at something all. like that. And then it screws to your the wall of your stand. Each mm -hmm. of your drivers are sitting on there. They'll never fall off the cabinet. Yeah. And it's all clear acrylic. It just has the paper still on it. Yeah, it and looks good. Small holes to screw it on. Nice. Wall. That's awesome. I like yeah. it. And then I showed this one on... This is my last one. But wait, there's this more. On, uh, YouTube a while back. This yep. was my work tray. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something I could sit on top of my tank and run PVC pipe through it. So it would keep it on top of the tank. And I could put something in it and work on it. 
and let the water just drip into the system. And it would give me time to like scrape Mahanos off a rock or trim mm. off something or glue something or whatever you're going to do. You can do it and then you can put it right in the tank and you can shove it to the side and work on this part of the tank. It's just a convenience factor. And so I showed this to people and said, this is what I made. And you can see it's all scuffed up from all the rocks that I worked on. Nice. So I made that first one and then I made a second one. And now this is the third one. <laughs> so this three. one, brand new shiny, it has legs on it. So you can actually set it on the table again. And the reason for that is because there's a row of frag plugs in the back now. And then you work area here on ah, the front. I like that. That's a good, it's a good way to have the two in there. So you can prepare your frags in advance. Mm -hmm. Set them in the tray, bring the tray to your tank, and set it down. And with those frag plugs sticking through, you had to have legs on here, so that way the plugs wouldn't plop back out when yeah. you set it on the surface. I, so I like you have a little, lots of little clever ideas that you work into, it, which is great. Quick shout out, yeah. Coreless Reef Solutions. Thank you very much for the five dollars super chat. Much appreciated. I think you're supposed to split that with me. All right, <laughs> I owe you a call. I'll share a coffee with you, man. <laughs> But yeah, right, so that was all of the things I had to show you there. Nope, very cool. I keep waiting for, but wait, there's more. That's what else you got? <laughs> more. Um, no, other things are boxed up, ready to be shipped out. Nice. I can take you into the workshop if you like. I'll just have to connect on my phone first. Okay, we'll do that in one sec. Uh, G Day Reefing uh, Trey is a genius idea. Uh, I need one. Would you ship to Australia? I can. Yeah, doable. Whenever it's a long distance shipment, all I do is I look up what shipping costs and let them know. Yeah. And if that's affordable or that's just acceptable, then I ship it. And I ship it to the United States Postal Service International. So basically, I have to go up to the post office, fill out a customs form, ship mm -hmm. it. Okay. And I don't actually charge for that extra hassle. I just mm -hmm. basically say, this is the product. This is, I box it up, you know, best I can. It's on its way. Okay, perfect. Uh, Jeff was asking, how much is the frag rack that you were showing? Uh, 25 bucks. There you go, 25 bucks. Uh, another one a couple minutes ago that I didn't get to yet. Uh, Salty Shack Ben was asking, do you rote all of the edges for sharpness? Do you cut the top brace out of just one piece? I think he was talking about the potential of that water container. But, that is the sump, yeah. Yep. And do you also torch polish or sand the edges? Okay, so to answer all those questions, okay. I route all the edges, yes. After it's all glued up. I actually overhang a little bit. I like to overhang about an eighth of an inch on all my perimeter edges. And then I will route it off. And then I take a second router, a smaller router, which you'll see in the workshop. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a small roundover bit and I run around the whole perimeter. And I actually do all of it. I do the vertical walls, the base, and the top. Mm -hmm. The reason I do it on everything is because that way, if you're carrying it, you don't cut your hands. And if you reach into the cabinet, you don't slice your arm. And then you reach into it, you don't get sliced either. Mm -hmm. And then in, any edges that are not glued are what I flame polish. Yep. So like if I build a sump, the tops of the baffles are all flame polished. Okay. The inner rim is flame polished. So again, the whole purpose is so you reach and you don't get scuffed. Yeah. And it looks good too. It gives you that nice clear, does, crystal clear look. Could you flame polish a glued edge or do you not just do it just because, I guess it's rubber. Uh, there's only one company I knew that was doing it and yep. they did that because that was their thing, their shtick. Mm -hmm. And every other manufacturer said, I cannot believe these people do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so because what you're doing is you're heating a bonded seam mm -hmm. and you're actually weakening the bond. So okay. while it might Makes look sense. prettier, basically what you're supposed to do, you know, when you're, especially with display tanks, you're supposed to buff the edge to get that shiny look. You're not supposed to heat it up with a, pro <laughs> a propane torch or any other kind of lamp. I, I, I've used heat guns and lighters and all kinds of stuff to shine up my terrible cats. <laughs> Okay, a couple more questions in the chat. Uh, what is the best glue for repairing a crack on acrylic? Okay, so here's the thing. If it's new acrylic, you can do it one way. If it's something used you're trying to repair, it could be something else. And it's what you're trying to glue together. Are you just trying to put a Band-Aid on it? Like, you know, here's your piece of acrylic and you're just like, bloop, and you're trying to put a piece on top of that. You put like number 16, mm -hmm. it, it looks like a gel. Yeah. And you put it on there and you press your piece in there and you hold it for about 60 seconds or so and that's it. But you may end up seeing like a bajillion cracks. That's what happens, especially with mm -hmm. used acrylic. New acrylic tends to not craze like that. Okay, good to but, know. Uh, if you're trying to fix a skimmer that had a PVC pipe coming off of it, you know, some kind of a fitting, mm -hmm. sometimes you can just use uh, PVC cement and put it on the fitting and press it to the skimmer, and that will bond it instead of using number 16. Because 16 is for acrylic. Well, that's the well, other that's stuff well done. And the PVC glue bonds to acrylic, yeah. which is kind yeah. of nice. Is that well is done, that well 16? Done 16? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. It's always well done. Okay. Yeah, that's what I used in the past. I was checking. Number 16 is the gel. Uh, it takes longer to dry. It is not something you want to use like caulk 
-hmm. You don't use tons of it because as number 16 dries, it shrinks by a third. And so if you were to do an entire, like a a gusset or a seam Mm -hmm. and you just put all this gel in there, as it dries, it will suck down. And as it sucks down, it'll fill itself with bubbles. Ah, so, I didn't very, know that. So I will get something up here right back. Okay. That's good to know. I had no idea on that one. Just, um, so there you go. Well done, 16. For the, if you have a very small theme, seam, um, methylene chloride is basically what will fuse it. Like that's like the liquid you'll see. You'll drop between two flat edge pieces. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is a tip you can get at Hobby Lobby. Mm-hmm. And they sell like a five pack for a dollar, and it actually fits your ah, tube of number sixteen. Nice. So you can just press it on top, and you can cut off because it's actually longer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like a long needle, so it's super thin for like liquid. And you can just trim off. I like to trim it to about here, so I have a very small hole in the tip, and that right there allows the uh, you to control the flow. And I also hold a paper towel nearby, so like if I'm mending something. If you are running this stuff through the, and you'll see nothing's going to, we're not squeezing it. It's not like a liquid. It's it's too thick. Mm-hmm. But as you do this, as soon as I'm done, I take a paper towel and I very carefully kind of get up and sneak up on it and get the tip and pull away. Mm-hmm. As if you just put glue and pull back, there'll be this silly string, and static electricity will suck it to the edge or to the wall, and you'll have this horrible permanent silly string line because it's glue <laughs> on acrylic and yep. it, no fixing it. And they're done that. <laughs> <laughs> So. Pro tips. Um, okay. This Couple, is, this uh, is uh, the stuff I use uh, okay. normally. It's very watery. The methylene chloride. That stuff evaporates like crazy too. Yeah, and it's skin safe. I use it on my hands all the time. I mean, I rub it on my... No, I'm kidding. I don't put it on my face. But I um, <laughs> sometimes you get on your hands. You don't have to worry about it. I, I don't. I'm mm-hmm. sure 20 years from now, I'll come back to this live stream doing an update. So I have cancer. But uh, so far, I'm doing all right. And <laughs> I, I don't like breathe it in, but you will smell it. Mm-hmm. You definitely recommend using it in a well-ventilated area. Okay. And I, uh, you don't want to spill it. <laughs> no accidents. Yeah. And probably make melt, sure, you'll probably melt your carpet. <laughs> make sure you seal the lid tight. I had some left. I went to go use it. I'm like, why is my can empty? It was yeah. 100% sealed. Just evaporated out. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's no good. Okay. So okay. Well, I was trying to connect to my phone. Okay. And like earlier. And it said, you have to get Google Hangouts. I'm like, well, we actually did it. So I don't know. Yeah. What you, probably, you should have the app. Maybe copy and paste into a web browser, then connect. That might work. Or maybe I clicked the wrong link. Maybe okay. I clicked the one you gave me for the uh, chat box. <laughs> so, oh, maybe. Uh, so, quick question: Will Mark make a lid f- like a fl- for a tank like a fluval Evo? A lid. A well, I can. I actually make them out of polycarbonate, mm-hmm. and I would just need to know, you know, like the exact dimensions to do something like that. So and what? And you're going to need kind of tabs to set it on. You're going to have to 3D print some little tabs to mm-hmm. rest it on. And so, and why use polycarbonate? Because it doesn't sag? Polycarbonate doesn't absorb any kind of moisture whatsoever. So it stays nice and straight. Okay. And if you use acrylic, the bottom side will get wet while the top side is dry, especially dry because of the light above it. And the acrylic does this number. Mm-hmm. And so then every week you're flipping it. So it'll do it the other direction. And you flip it and you flip it and you flip it. And it's ridiculous. Yep. I, so I use polycarbonate on all my lids. Okay. And I include lids on top of... Uh, overflow boxes like i make the black ones to prevent light from getting in to create mm-hmm. algae growth they actually they sag surprisingly easily even though a small one i've learned <laughs> um how much for an acrylic box like you made for the mp10 and the nem tank uh, i have not done the one for the mt10 i think i can't i think it's ah, too darn small too small I made it for the mp40 yep and that has worked out fine i've made several of those uh, well I tried to make several, and they kept jumping off the table. Finally, I was able to fine-tune my machine to the point where I could get a few successfully cut out. Mm-hmm. But the MP10 is so small, I think it'd be better to have someone that can laser cut that. Yeah, okay. So while it's my great idea, until I own a laser, it's not going to happen. That's fair. Lasers are fun. <laughs> you may have to just rip me off on that one. It's like, all right. L- laser- lasers are fun. Um, someone's asking if you'll do frag racks and black acrylic. I could. Could? Yes. It's doable. Special request. Cost a, a little, cost a little bit more. Oh, okay. So your phone's yeah. connected. I hear. We're doing it. I'm doing the echo thing. You told me not to do that. Yeah, I know. Double marks. Where's the mute button? Double the goodness. Uh, that makes sense. I think yeah. so. You're very no. quiet though. So. Oh, there you go. You're good. I can just hang up. No, you're good. It's all good in the hood. All right. Should I take you into the workshop then? Um, you should. However, your cell phone's the one that's muted. So mute the computer and unmute your cell phone.
Well, I'll walk away from the computer. That'll solve the whole problem. That works too. There you go. <laughs> right now, as I'm getting on the tripod, so I can mm -hmm. have walk around and do my thing. So. Perfect. Okay, let me swap to the other camera. Um, so Kyle was saying I've never built anything out of acrylic for fish tanks. I always just use a small bottle with acetone and use a needle tip to go along the edge. Is glue a better option? Oh, you are still muted on your cell phone. Okay, I'm unmuted now. There you go. Okay. Um, so acetone to glue acrylic. Have you ever done that? No, it's a cleaner. It's not a. It's not a bonder. I don't see that working. So acetone, it, acetone. It might semi work, sense. but not the best option. <laughs> I've used acetone before, and uh, not to glue acrylic. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't know. My answer is I don't know. Fair. Sounds good. That does, um, actually, I think I, what I used to clean is denatured alcohol is what it is. And even that might be wrong. Okay. Because the problem is I buy like one can and I pour it into stuff and I don't see the can for a year. So I'm always you know trying to, what did I buy last time? I start freaking out. What if I get the wrong thing? Like acetone and I ruin my project, you know, because the worst part is when you build something and it looks great and then you're just like at the final stage, you're pulling off the paper and you find some flaw or you do something and you spill a little bit of goo and you know, it's like, oh, it just ruins it. Cause I like everything to be perfect. So, all right. I'll yep. give you guys a tour of the workshop. Sounds good. Um, well, I can do it over my shoulder. But I think it's better if I just walk around. Let me see if I can reverse this camera really quick. I'm so. still very jealous of that giant routing table that you have. <laughs> the CNC router. Oh, beautiful. All right, so there's part of my workshop. All right, so this is my CNC machine. I've been running it for a year and a half. I just finished cutting out a project today. I'm adjust these legs for a second. It's going to be jerky for a moment. How bad's the reception, Devin? Nope, it's actually looking pretty good. Okay, good. So this right here is a set of baffles for someone who's their own sump with a glass aquarium. And this one here is the teeth. So they would then just glue this in their glass aquarium. It's for a 20 gallon long. Mm -hmm. And then these right here are regular baffles that would go after the skimmer. In the bottom corner is rounded to fit in the silicone bead and they just silicone into the tank. So there are three baffles plus the one with teeth for the refugium zone. Nice. This right here is a bigger baffle. This is for a 40 gallon breeder. Nice. And it has the matching baffles, which are shorter for the skimmer zone. So that's one right there. And then all these things have been cut out, but I still have to work on them. They're not done. I can't just say, and boom, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is a large top of a skimmer stand. Mm -hmm. And here is its matching leg. There's one right there. One right there. Nice. And then somewhere on this table, I have a smaller skimmer stand by comparison. So it goes in a, a lot of planning. You plan all these projects in one big sheet and just let the rest I try to, yeah. CNC I try machine. to use up everything I can during a cut. Mm -hmm. This over here is the top of a top-off container. And I started to do these instead ah. because it's stronger than just having a rim with a lid. Yep. So now what you've got is this piece here that sits on the top, and mm -hmm. you've got all six walls of the box glued together, so it's very sturdy. Nice. The big round opening lets you pour in water easily for refills, and there's a hole at the top for your ATO pump tubing to come out. And there's a notch right there at the top of the circle. That is for the power cord from the pump to come ah. up. So you can just push the pump into the big opening, put nice. the notch there, and then you put a round lid. Not this. This is what I cut out. But I actually have a polycarbonate lid that fits in here. So that way they can keep it nice and clean. But you just take it off and fill it up and then put the lid back on. I thought that was better than something with a hinge that flops down while you're filling and just doosh, water goes everywhere. I figure if you can just take the lid out of your way, pour your water in, put the lid back on, it's a smarter, smarter situation. It's an easy way to do it. Nice. And then there's sheets and sheets of acrylic. There's one over there with a big X on it that tells me do not use that for acrylic because it's actually part polycarbonate. <laughs> but for some reason, that package that they sent me, what, or that sheet that they sent me, didn't have any writing on it whatsoever. But the only way I knew what it was is by the sound. Compared to acrylic, acrylic sounds different than polycarbonate. So huh. like, oh, that's my polycarbonate sheet. All right, nice to know. So I put an X on so I don't make a mistake. Nice, good to know. Now, can and you... then when I cut things out, I do it on this computer right here. Can you glue polycarbonate like acrylic, like the same types of glue? Or do you need Actually, like... you can't. <laughs> no? You need like it, a... if, when you get some glue on it, it turns white. It's kind of hideous. Hmm. So my project was cut out up here. Yep. And over here, I don't know if I can even show this to you guys. I don't know if this works. Let's see if I can do this. Here is my code for cutting out everything. Is it just, so just G-code that it uses? Hmm? Does it use G-code? It 
don't think it's called G code. I don't know. Beats me, man. I don't know the facts. I just do my thing. <laughs> I just make it work. I have work. a TV in here to entertain me. I just picked myself up a Bluetooth recently that actually is loud enough to compete with Minion. Nice. And then I have a lot of pieces over here that are pre-cut, and then I'm always cutting or up in this area right here. Oh, very I cool. also have a jointer. Yep. So if I have a piece of acrylic, like let's say I had this piece right here, and I want the edge to be smooth, I would run it across the jointer, and there's a couple of blades that spin really fast here. And I would just push this across, and it would just like trim the edge and make it nice and perfectly smooth. Nice. So, and is a jointer a is a jointer versus a router? Like, which one's better for giving you a clean edge to glue together? This is the router. Yep. And there is the tip of the router bit. Mm -hmm. So when I've got a box built, which I don't have any boxes built right now of any kind whatsoever, but when I would be running the router, I would hold the router along the edge of the project, and the bearing would trace the acrylic mm -hmm. as I work my across and give me that nice rounded over edge. Okay, nice. And this is a handheld one to give you that finished round tip. Mm -hmm. And then I have this larger one to cut off the excess. Okay. So it gets you a nice straight edge. And then you have the round over bit when you're done. So I actually have two because I'm not going to switch bits back and forth. They'll drive me crazy. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so someone's asking, what size of bits do you use for it? I am using... Okay, so there's a trick to that. Mm -hmm. If you want, I mean, here's an example of a bit. So this would be nice. They can actually look it up. This is Diablo. Okay. And this one I got at Home Depot. I think it was $25, $28. And this one is a um, quarter inch shank, and it's a half inch bit. So the, the blade cutting area is a half an inch. The shank is what fits into the router itself. Usually you want to use half inch bits into a router because they're a lot more stable. They're a lot more, they're very, very straight. And then the larger the top half, the cooler it runs. The smaller the top half, the hotter it runs. So as you're running down some acrylic, if you had like a big tank, like something six feet, eight feet long, you might want to use the larger bit with a larger diameter because it's slice, slice, okay. slice. It's more of a, it's a bigger surface area to slice off. Yeah. Or with a real fine one, you can actually melt your acrylic if you're going a little too slow or the bit's going too fast. Okay. Now, are they special bits for acrylic or are they just general routing bits? Uh, this is a general flush trim bit. Mm -hmm. It can be used for wood or acrylic, wood or plastic. Uh, you can't use on metal. Okay. And this would also, I mean, th not this one, but this type of stuff is also used for formica. Oh, for when like they the glue the formica, and they actually have a sheet hanging over, and then they put a piece underneath, and then they take the bit and they and it gives you that perfect little thing. And then they take a file or a sanding block and they go shh, shh, to get that exact forty-five edge. Yeah. So when you put your elbows on the edge of a desk or a counter, you don't actually get sliced. Cut right here. Nice. What else? That's a pretty sweet shop. I like it. Yeah, I like my workshop. I spent a couple months building it, and mm -hmm. it's completely soundproof when it's all running. Nobody knows, which is awesome. And I have a vacuum system that sucks all the dust out into a, a machine or into a dust collector outside. Nice. And the table itself is a vacuum table, so when it's cutting acrylic, it sucks the sheet of acrylic to the table. Ah. So it, the pieces, in theory, mm -hmm. don't move. And occasionally, they do, like today. So here's one that didn't do so well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was actually going to ask, when you're cutting, does it stay in place enough? Like, do you clamp it, or do you just cut in the middle and work your way and do the perimeter cut last? Like, does it have that No, logic? that whole table is a vacuum table. Okay. It's sort of like the opposite of an air hockey table. Instead of yep. blowing up, it sucks down. Mm -hmm. And so it pulls the sheet down. And the idea is you cut everything tiny first. Like, when you're trying to cut out something stupid like this thing, that yep. wants to fly off the table. Yeah. Guarantee you. So this one here, I needed this little gizmo. I was trying to do something nifty. It never works, but you know, I had an idea. Mm -hmm. So I actually told it to cut out the circle first, which yep. I'm going to knock out now if I can. There we go. So now we have an eyeball, and we have a piece with a hole. Mm -hmm. And then I told it cut out my perimeter, so it cut the entire rim. It gave me the round over. It went straight, straight, and it did it. It actually cut three cuts. So it went one pass, yep. two passes, and then the final pass. So now I have this piece of acrylic, but if you'll look really closely at it, you'll see inside there's a skin, like an onion skin. Yeah. And that was how much I left behind on the table to keep this from jumping off the table. Uh, okay. So then I have to clean this off somehow, one way or another, but and I have to trim the edge. I actually took a razor blade and I sliced it off the table to get yeah. this piece out, and then I gouged the heck out of my thumb the other day because I jammed the knife all the way into me and I pulled it all the way out of me and then I put nice. a band-aid on it 
And every time I changed the bandaid, it just started bleeding. I was like, oh, wow, that was a bad one. Because for a whole day, every bandaid that went on turned red. I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Accidents happen at the workshop. Mm -hmm. It does. It's true. It does. I don't have one of those signs that says we have an accident free in 45 days. I just, it happens every day. So I just forget it. Just, just leave a zero on it. Just leave the sign up. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 10 minutes. I'm doing so good. Yes. This is the top of an Eheim chimney. Um, mm -hmm. And this is the piece that gets wasted. And I build a little box that was underneath. And you set this on the top of your tank. You put your auto feeder, like your mm -hmm. AFS or your, uh, your Eheim. Yep. And then it'll drizzle food in. And the food goes into the tank. and doesn't just go down the overflow. So I sell a lot of those. Oh, nice. So that's a mount um, to put it over the tank more so it doesn't keeps it further away from the overflow? Yes. Well, okay. you know, it doesn't really matter because it's a chimney. By putting it down into the water and still letting the, the food sit on the surface and drift, mm -hmm. you solve the problem. So by having that little collar and the food goes into the collar, it gets wet. And you know what? The fish go in and get it anyway, yeah. which is great. So when they do it and they bite, it comes out their gills and definitely goes in the water. And then your Vortec or whatever blows it through. So it goes everywhere and everyone gets a bite. Mm -hmm. nice. Here's a lid for an overflow box. And it's got that rounded edge for yep. like, uh, I think Aquion tanks maybe. Mm -hmm. And I sell these. Uh, this is black. I just left the film on so it doesn't get scratched while it's in my shop. Mm -hmm. And I bevel the edge also so it's a little bit not sharp. And you just said, this is that polycarbon I was talking about. It sounds different than... I don't know if you can tell the difference, but polycarbonate has a twang to it. So, um, this stuff here, great. I put, on, I do these for rectangular boxes, curved boxes, corners. You know, like an eight, uh, uh, eight inch quarter radius. Here's a lid for the top of a little tiny ATO. I actually had to make an ATO that was like this wide. I was like, oh my god, these like the world's smallest lid. How are you going to fill this up? But it allowed them to put in a small pump, like a Tunzi Osmolator or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or even, you know, now the ATK has a very skinny pump. You can just drop down in there. And typically when your top of container is really narrow, mm -hmm. I recommend you install a float and let the RO system fill it up once a mm -hmm. week or once every five days or whatever it is. And that way you never have to open anything or touch it. And everything inside, inside the box stays pristine and clean. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, two questions before I forget about them. Someone was asking how long do the rudder bits actually last? Or how often do you have to replace them? For me yeah. or for anyone? For you. <laughs> for me, I go through rudder bits every two months. Okay. Um, the one on the table depends if I make a mistake. That's that cool. one, I shatter it. And it'll, it'll drive it down into the table and destroy it. Here's an example of a, actually a sturdy bit. This is not the one I'm using right now. This mm -hmm. is a nice bit right here. And this one here, quarter inch shank, mm -hmm. and it's very long. And all this is the cutting. And you'll see it's a spiral cut. So it's not a straight edge. It's actually cutting and sending the shavings upward as it turns. Okay. And it's spinning at 16,000 RPMs. And the one I use for like today is probably half as thick as this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's very fine. And if you make a mistake, the machine will just crunch into the table, snap it off, and then, and then the router just keeps going, and, there, and it's doing nothing if there's no bit. Yeah. And I have to stop everything, restart the project, uh, reinstall a new bit, and I, I buy several of these at a time. That's fair. Because <laughs> I don't want to be down. You know, like, if the machine goes down, I need to keep running. I have to get back on yeah. track. Okay. So you just said 1,600 RPM. So how much would... 16,000. 16,000. Okay. So... Is higher speed better for not potentially melting it or heating it up too much? I mean, because yeah, I'm assuming matters. if you go too slow, you're going to melt the acrylic, right? Speed matters. You have to do the right amount. And mm -hmm. the other thing, the, one of the ways you know if the bit is good or bad is, is the acrylic shavings coming off like snow or mm -hmm. is it like clumps? And if it's clumping, the bit is getting dull. Uh, okay. The easiest way to tell if a bit is sharp or not is just run your finger across and if you bleed, it's sharp. <laughs> <laughs> and I've then you have mistake. red band-aids all day. Oh, God, I, I should get stock in band-aids. Um, I have to use tools like this now, which I never had to use before. And uh, it is a micrometer. It yep. lets me measure the size of everything, including the thickness of a router bit, the thickness of the acrylic I'm cutting. Mm -hmm. um, if I have to measure for a bulkhead that I have to make the hole for that bulkhead, I will actually take this device and I'll measure the outer diameter mm -hmm. to make sure that I make it right. So like right now, this one is measuring... One six six. So there, you can kind of see the number, yeah. and I can switch it to millimeters for you Canadian peoples. I think I usually measure millimeters. I have one. I use it for three. Look at that. So forty one point four seven millimeters because yeah. that's a fun number. And then I don't actually cut that size. I will then go a hair larger than that. So there's actually some room because if it's dead exactly, you're like, oh, and you're like jamming it in. Threading so I want to make sure there's a little bit of play. Just mm -hmm. 
you know, I don't want it to be too much, but that's that's okay right there. So that's at 43 millimeters, or real numbers, 1.69 inches. <laughs> and then I have a device like this, which actually measures how far the bit is to the table. Ah. And so I set the machine up, and then I set the X, Y, and Z, and I actually set up my axis for all three. And I have to have the bit go down. And when I push down with the machine, I dial a, a controller, and it brings mm -hmm. down, 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 down. And when it's exactly at zero, I tell my machine, you're at zero. And then in theory, I don't punch a hole through my table. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Have, have you ever done that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some other bits here just for funsies. I've never used them. Mm -hmm. Here's one. That's a pretty nice one. Very nice. Um, here is a comparison to what uh, this is pretty close to what I normally use. Yeah. So that's my normal bit. Okay. That, oh, dang. That's bit. huge. That's yeah, like that's what she said. Your, <laughs> your one inch thick acrylic wall. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's people that do the very large tanks and they have to, and they want to cut down and they want to go through like a two inch thick piece of acrylic and you will go layer by layer by layer. You might not go down a quarter of an inch at a time and work mm -hmm. your way down and the machine takes a half an hour or so to go through it. So if you do multiple passes to get through a chunk of acrylic, will you have mm -hmm. a smooth edge in the end or would you still want to sand it or router or plane it or something afterwards? I'm still edging it on the machine. Yeah, I, I have tried everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've tried, I've had people tell me, oh, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, well, yeah, that, that's what they always say. They say you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, I tried where I did 99% of the sheet, you know, two layers down. And then I would say, okay, do the final layer but go in, you know, like 0 0.01 mm -hmm. on all sides. Just go in a fraction, and that way you get a nice, perfect, clean pass. And you'll end up seeing like these striations on the side of the acrylic. And when you glue it, you'll actually see the striations in the seam. So by mm -hmm. running it across my jointer, I get a nice, perfect, super sharp edge. Nice. I bring them down. I put. I use my needle application system. I put in my glue, and boom, I have something that looks good when i'm done that is nice i think a jointer is the tool i've been missing because i just like when in the past i just use like a table saw or something and cut it but it's not that perfect edge oh i found a bigger bit for you too and one more this one this is a beast i can't believe i just grabbed it by the sharp part <laughs> that is a beast that is a beast of a bit have you ever used it for what i work a quarter inch that's what i thought that's what i was asking <laughs> came with the machine yeah <laughs> one day when you build that four inch thick panel you're set <laughs> i don't know um what else can i answer for you guys um i probably missed some questions hopefully i got most of them if i didn't miss anything just ask it again guys we have to show off the shirt the shirt we is do. awesome you do it's a very I nice love that shirt. do you have a home record call do you have one in your tank of course not i have a little <laughs> disney mine would have the little disney logos with mine a little bit ears on it <laughs> yeah that's what my coral looks like. It has little ears on it. That's right. You should. Be good. It's doing pretty good. Does it still have the same colors when you bought it? Yeah, it's always been the same color. It just okay. never looks like the amazing pictures you see. That's fair. I mean, it's just they just never match the photographs from the vendors. <laughs> but it's still pretty. Yeah. I mean, it's true. I'm not lying. I mean, it's, the angle they get it, the lighting, the depth. You're know, going through this much water where we're looking down through this much mm -hmm. or more. You know, it, you have a different perspective, and you don't have their lights. And yeah. you don't have their Photoshop with your eyeball. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I mean, they want to make it look absolutely insane. So you'll spend 80 bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I get it. But bottom line is, you know, it's a pretty coral. It's really nice under pure blue, pure blue light. Yeah. But it's not like, oh, my God, that is the best coral I've ever had in my life. I don't get that feeling. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. I was just curious. Because whenever yeah. I see photos and you see them in person, they're never quite that crazy looking as they are. So. Well, you need the top-down look. And yeah. when you go to a frag swap and you see them selling it, again, it's sitting in this much water and you're looking straight from above with the light right above and you're looking at that angle and it looks really pretty. You're like, I'll take it. And they're hyper blue, and, you know, completely color pop to the extreme. I, I actually like to take their knob and twist it to white and look at it again. Yeah. <laughs> make sure it's too. alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay. With, so with acrylic, mm -hmm. for... Do, 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 do. I'm trying to think. So I've built some weird stuff in the past, more like stands. Like I couldn't fit my old calcium rack through my sump, so I built like got these big thick legs and built a platform to hold up above, so I could sell my refugium mm -hmm. underneath and yeah. stuff. And I've always used to use Weld On sixteen for stuff. I've used methylene chlorine if I'm trying to make it extra pretty, but for mm -hmm. strength, I just put a little gob of that on there. A gob. A gob. <laughs> little little gob. <laughs> so 
in order to get like a, a very good joint, the mm -hmm. key is to have it super flush and pristine, yep. basically, right? Right. Any yeah. deviations, it's not going to be as well. I mean, weld on 16 will fill some gaps, but... It does. It fills some gaps. That's true. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes people use it. The other thing, that's why I run the jointer. It gives me that very sharp edge mm -hmm. where with, um, if you sand it, like if you have a piece of acrylic like this one here, and we have a sanding block. Yeah. So let's say I'm taking this piece and I'm just going to sand it back and forth on top of that. that. Yeah. Even as I'm doing it, I can feel in my hand, my hand doing this right here. It's yeah. rocking. And you will actually round over your mm -hmm. edge and you don't have a straight edge anymore. It's literally rounded. And yep. then when I try and glue it, you might get a beautiful seam in the middle and you'll see like bubbles on each edge because that's where it rounded. It couldn't make the contact. It was supposed to, you know, that dead yep. 90 degree angle. Also, um, there are lots of jigs that you need. I've gotten rid of most of them because of my machine now. Mm -hmm. But when you're gluing stuff, you need to do something to keep it at a 90. And I use a quarter, you know, a carpenter squares, but I cut off the corner. Ah. So that way, when I put two pieces together, so don't glue everything up in the air, because that's the best way to demonstrate anything. Mm -hmm. You do it like this, and this triangle will keep your piece straight up and down, and you can see the corner. Hopefully my finger's not in the way. And that way the glue doesn't bond this to the project, because it's plastic too. <laughs> did it happen so once? So you definitely you want to have a beginning? quarter. Hmm? Did, did that happen once, or have you done that since the beginning? Oh, I know better. <laughs> but, you know, that, it's obvious. You know, this, yeah. When you buy one that's normal, you've got mm -hmm. a full piece all the way to the end. So if I were to put these two pieces together with this one, you can imagine what's going to happen with the glue. You know, it's going to bond right into it. So that is why I, I lopped off all the corners on these. And so I have a lot with the corner missing, which is kind of funny. <laughs> That's awesome. And I have a lot of wooden ones, uh, wooden jigs, and they kind of use a lot of magnets to hold things together while mm -hmm. I'm gluing. That sounds a good idea. I actually. also use weights to hold things in place. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are trying to put a piece on top, you know, you've got your bottom piece, and you put another piece on top, so you've got your two pieces. If you put a weight on top to press down while you're gluing, you can you think it's going to make it stronger because you're squishing it, but you're actually squishing the glue out. And now you have an edge of glue and an edge of glue, but actually inside is a dry socket. Huh. So you want some downward pressure, but you don't want so much weight that it squishes out the glue. Huh, good to know. So yeah. for the most part, just a tiny bit of weight, nothing over there, you're pushing yeah. out the good stuff. I've done stuff as simple, as, you know, on top of stuff, as simple as a tape, the weight of a tape measure and just set it on the top okay. and let that just sit there. Just a little bit of downward pressure. I also only glue horizontally. Yep. So I'm gluing down on top of a piece. Mm -hmm. I'm never trying to glue a vertical seam because the glue will just run straight down. So I don't recommend that. Most people don't. Okay. I know one company that does vertical seams, and it's a crazy process where they've got the two pieces of acrylic like this. they got a guy, a got a guy with a bottle pouring the glue, like with the ketchup bottle. He's squeezing it out, and it's running down. And they have a can underneath the catch that's dripping out, and he just keeps running it, and he's basically, like, shaking it or tapping it to make the bubbles come out, and he just keeps flowing, 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 catching, catching, catching. Sounds messy. And I don't even think what they caught is reusable. I think it's already chemically altered, so you can't, like, just put it in the top and start again like a conveyor of yeah. glue. It just sounds messy. So, it, yeah. I was like, what? Vertical? Are you crazy? Why? So, but they were doing it. Huh. Craziness. Yeah. Uh, okay. Have you ever used a laser cutter for acrylic? I don't have one, so no. Okay. If you were to cut anything with a laser, you can't glue it. <laughs> that's yeah. So that's what a uh, uh, Coralas was just saying. When you use a laser, yeah. you have to refinish the glossy edge before you glue. That's right. Yeah, the melted edge is melted. So yeah. You actually have to sand it down or route the edge to get a sharp edge huh. to now be able to glue that together. I would have never so, considered that. For example, if I owned a laser. And you talked about the MP10 cover. Mm -hmm. I could laser out the center holes so that the, the slits are all done, yeah. and but leave the whole sheet. So you'd see a whole sheet with like a bunch of gills. And then you could put it on the table and you could cut out the, the, the perimeter. But again, it's such a very thin, lightweight acrylic. It's probably going to jump off the table. It's probably not going to work out. So yeah. basically, you're more likely to cut everything out of eighth inch with a laser, let it cut out every single piece, mm -hmm. and then sand the edge and deal with whatever quality you get because it's sanded and try to glue that together as best you can. Yeah, good to know. On that note, I have a little dinky laser. I was going to try rigging up to the 3D printer to try cutting just some small stuff just for fun. You could try. I will. Good to know after we finish it now. I did not know that. <laughs> There's a machine, um, or a gizmo I can put on my machine 
like it's somewhere between 100 and 300 but i won't spend the money because i don't know that it works yeah i hate to buy things with an if yeah you saw my whole thing where i debated what to buy for my live stream right mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like what do i buy i just want to know and so i haven't bought anything uh it's the same thing with that thing if i buy that thing and i strap it onto the machine and i try to laser i don't have a guarantee it's gonna work it, it's not like this is what it does you're gonna work you know and so i'm just like i haven't done it is it just but it would be kind of cool to get one where it like put the logo of my company into the acrylic would be nice and yeah, etching yeah. yeah you wouldn't need a very powerful one for that you can get off no i don't think so either yeah. but the same part uh, same point is it's weird because when i look at the, like the specs of the lasers i look up mm -hmm. they say things on like doesn't work on clear acrylic <laughs> like well that's what i use so there you go yeah you need and if i were to put on colored acrylic yeah like, let's say at the front of the sump. Mm -hmm. Well, the front has to be clear. Because yeah. <laughs> you got to see into your sump. You know, you might have blue on the bottom and blue on the top or purple or green or all these colors that are out there. They're always the, the, the accents. They're not the main walls. So if I can't laser it. And I've seen top-up containers that have the etchings where it shows the gallon marks. And that's all neat looking, but it doesn't do anything for you. Yeah. You never look at your top-up container and say, oh, I'm down to 1.78 gallons. I should add 3.12 gallons more. Mm -hmm. You're just like, I need to add more water and you pour it in and you're good for five days. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think the etchings are neat looking. They're just, it's eye candy. It's cool the day you unpack it. After that, you never care about the numbers on the side of the container. Yeah, You might with a doser, but you won't with a top off container. Yeah, that's very true. It's just, if it's low, it's low, it's full. It's full. <laughs> yeah, refill me. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, there was a question that was like five minutes ago, but they're asking if you'd ever make calcium reactors or any that type of reactor type of stuff. I have a saying that I've been stating for a long time. I won't make anything round. And for the most part, I have not. Everything I make is usually a rectangle or a square, you know, that kind of thing. But with Minion, I'm able to do some different shapes. So like yeah. the tops of my sumps now have some curves in them instead mm -hmm. of it just being a hard corner. And that's been kind of nice. Okay. Is... I have considered making a reactor yeah. just because I would... I really need a bread and butter type thing that my company sells. Like if I made a reactor to hold carbon or GFO, which is kind of ironic since I don't run GFO, but I do run carbon. So if I made carbon reactors, I'd love it if everyone had a Mila's Reef reactor in their system, that would make me super happy. But you've got a tube and you've got an acrylic base on the bottom and you've got an acrylic piece on top and then you have a lid on top of that. Yeah. You've got to put a groove in the bottom for the tube to glue into. You've got to do a groove in the top for an O-ring. You've got mm -hmm. to do notches for the screws that tighten in and you have to thread for each screw to go in. You have to have a pipe going down the center, a bubble plate at the bottom with holes, yeah. a plate at the top, a sponge material of some kind, some elbow fittings that come out for water, and some tubing. I mean, all of that aye, to aye. maybe make thirty-five or fifty-five dollars or something. It's like this sounds like a stupid idea. <laughs> for I, me. I see your logic. It's it's a lot I, of work just, for not it, much. Sounds, I mean, yeah, maybe I could spend a day and I could make twenty. Yeah. And then I sell 20 and let's say I sold them at a hundred dollars each. Let's say I did the American pricing because you always say it's cheaper overseas, right? Yeah. So if it's a hundred each and I made 20, I made $2,000, right? But that sounds great, but they need to deduct all of those parts. How much did I really make? You know, did I make $20 a piece? Did I earn $400? You know what I mean? I don't know. It, and they're not going to like sell like that. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make 20 and I'll sell two or three. And then I wait for word of mouth and then two more sell. And then I still have what I have left 14 left on the shelf that are in my way. <laughs> yeah it's a vicious business man <laughs> <laughs> and then even if i make the most beautiful reactor in the world people are like oh i like synergy better or i like this or i like that or i only buy two little fishies so that undercuts the potential as well i That's don't know fair. i don't have the, the brain for marketing i'm more about professionalism and honesty mm -hmm. and i even tell people don't buy something for me because you don't need it you know yeah. like i i don't sit there and just try to flip the sale mm -hmm. yeah and yeah, round acrylic is expensive too. Someone just mentioned that. Oh, and the tubing, yeah. Yeah, even I went to go buy it. I'm like, it's cheap for me to just buy in a reactor and just to buy one and make it myself. You might as well buy one pre-made. So. I was going to make myself a square waste re uh, waste uh, collector yeah. for my <laughs> skimmer. <laughs> and at the frag swap, someone was selling in a vast marine one. Or no, it was a uh, bash, C bash C. Yeah. And it's really pretty. And the thing was used, you know, it's frag swap. And I think he wanted like $25 or something for the thing. And I thought, man, there's more acrylic in there than $25. I'll buy that yeah. and shove the tube in it and call it a day. And yeah. I've been using that same thing now for at least six years. And that's $25 I've ever spent. Nice. Hey, that's <laughs> awesome. 
Um, this may, may or may not have been the same person earlier, but Lawrence is asking, do you make lids for tanks? Looking for acrylic lid for my Fluval 13.5 sent an email to you today. There you go. You have an email. I can do lids. Like I said, I can do very specific dimensions to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, most reef tanks don't need lids. A lot of people like to do screened tops. Mm -hmm. So that way you get the oxygenation and the aeration, but they don't let the fish jump out. Yeah. But I've had occasionally I've made a lid for someone that had a very small, let's call it a guppy tank. Yeah. It was this adorable lid with some slits in the top, and I made that and shipped it to California. Nice. And that and it was polycarbonate. It worked out just fine. Okay. Yeah, so they have a little thirteen and a half gallons, so a little nano tank. Yeah. Yep. But I would need them to give me like they'd have to measure everything and tell me what they want. Mm -hmm. Like if it's sitting on the rim or if it's dropping inside the perimeter, is there stuff in the back like all in one, or is it just you know just a perfect rectangle? Are the front corners rounded? I mean, there's yeah. so many little things to take into consideration. When I'm taking these orders and what you're describing right there, Devin, is a yeah. one off. Yeah. I will sell one and maybe mm -hmm. he'll tell five people or maybe he'll tell 2000 people and four more people will buy it. And the, the idea that, oh, I did it once on my machine so it'll know forever is not reality because <laughs> I draw it up on my computer and I have to get all my math right. And I might spend 15 or 20 minutes drawing it. Then I transfer it to this machine and I say, now cut it. Yeah. And if everything goes right, I win. And if it doesn't go right, I have to cut it again. You know? Yeah. So there's some factors there. I've actually considered possibly charging, which is going to be hard for the business to charge a setup fee, like a $35 for me to draw it because, you know, that's 20 minutes of my life before I even get to the part of actually cutting it out, out of the material I paid for. And then there's shipping and people hate shipping, which is, it's another part of the business that's hard because there's so many companies that offer free shipping mm. and I don't know how they do it. I actually asked one company, how are you doing free shipping? And they said, well, it's not free. I was like, it says it right there on your site. And they said, we pay for it. Yeah. I was like, how can you afford to pay for it? And they're like, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. But, you know, it's consumers. We're like, oh, free shipping. I'll take that. And then they go to my website, like, $17? That's ridiculous. And I'm like, that was just what FedEx charged. That isn't even me who bought the box, put the pack of material, mm -hmm. put it in safely, taped it shut, printed the label on my printer with my ink. You know, I know all of the, and then I drive it up to FedEx for you guys. You know, I mean, there's a kind of a beating, but you know what? It's all part of doing business. And I just tried to kind of, you know, not think about it too hard. Yeah, no, that's fair. Ship, shipping is a bugger. Yeah. You guys even have cheaper shipping out there. It sucks. In that should be my website. It should say shipping is a bugger. <laughs> shipping <laughs> is a Devin. bugger. <laughs> Kelly's come for a drive and pick it up. <laughs> yes, please pick up. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think we're just about at about an hour now, and I know I have a yeah, reefer meetup tonight, and I think you do too. So there's a rumor there's a meeting at my club tonight. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm arranging a, a social for a lot of the local reefers around here. So doing some some Let's reefer see. wings. How's the tank? There's my doing? frag tank. Nice. Give you some coral. These are my new frags that I brought home from Rico Palooza. Ah, what all did you get? I got these. That's all you get to know. Oh, thanks for that detailed insight. There's a insight. dendro. There's an acro that fell down that looks like a slimer. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what that is. That's a samacora. That got flipped over by my uh, cowrie. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a grafted monty right there. There's nice. another, I don't know. There's a monty. There's an, uh, a wild caught. There's an acro there. There's a langsay up there. I got some anemones and clowns in here. And then over here, the reef's got some white light. So I'll do this so I can block some of it. <laughs> yeah, do this. Trying to block some of the light coming from above, but you can kind of see the back end of my reef. Some of the acros. Nice. I don't know how pixelated this is getting. That's yeah, looking pretty good. So there's a question in the chat. What's the biggest project or the largest project you've done? I'm going to turn off the uh, muty. Yeah. The largest thing I've made? Yep. So here. What is it, sorry? Maybe what I'll do. So, do I have to turn on the microphone over here or is it off? No, nope, you're good. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, the largest thing I made was a sump that was eight feet long by four okay. feet wide. That's pretty and big. And basically, 200 gallon sump. And it is, it, there's a huge one like that under Tammy's tank, the 800 gallon reef. It's mm -hmm. a good size. Yeah, and that's a hard thing to build because when you glue things, you have to keep flipping it and flipping it and pivoting it and standing it up on its end and then turning it on its side. And then you have to route all the edges, all six sides, all six uh, walls. 
and again, you're flipping and flipping, and then you have to haul it outside to hose it down. And so I actually have a two wheeler. <laughs> oh really? To and I have a two wheeler all masked off so it doesn't scratch the acrylic. Oh nice, that's handy. And you you want to set it on there, but you don't want the the, the metal foot to like gouge in and yeah. do some damage to the acrylic. Yeah, no, that's smart. So what do you hose it off for? Just get the shavings and stuff off? Or? Yeah, I want to get it really clean before I flame polish. If you leave stuff in there when you're flame polishing, it will glue, it'll melt that right to the acrylic. Mm -hmm. And I like to get everything nice and pristine. I like to give it to them nice and new and clean rather than, here, just came out of the workshop, enjoy. You know, <laughs> I, I had actually a friend tell me they went to a distributor or a wholesaler, mm -hmm. and they said, wow, I was looking at this one brand of sumps, and they were all dirty inside, and like you gave it to the customer. That thing is like brand spanking shiny new. And I was like, well, yeah. Because, yeah, they're not doing that. And I was like, I had no idea. <laughs> I would think you automatically clean them out, but they don't. Yeah. No, that's fair. It makes sense. I mean, if you buy something brand new, you want it pristine and sparkly. It's part of that mm -hmm. feeling when you get it. Open it up. Yeah, I like to have them unpack it from the box and say, oh, my God. You know, that's, what, that's the reaction I'm looking for. And not the, oh, my God, FedEx killed it. You know, that's the other one that you sometimes get occasionally. <laughs> yep. Uh, hey, Mark, if Sonia is there, tell her hi for me. <laughs> oh, at the meeting tonight? That's from Thomas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Uh, looking at the clock right now, and I'm thinking... Cutting it. I'd have to, like, start driving right this minute. Yeah. And I told him he probably was not going to be able to make this meeting. I thought I was actually going to be out of town, because today is my mother's birthday. Oh, Tell her happy birthday for me. Her, but here I am in Fort Worth doing a live stream with Devin, putting my mother second, like a horrible son that I am. Well, you should call her and tell her I wish her happy birthday. Okay, I'll, I'll call her and <laughs> let her know that I hang up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll talk to her for a little happy bit. Why not? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, uh, one more thing I didn't talk about when it comes to working with acrylic, and you know, these aren't like secrets, but it's good to know. Mm -hmm. is if you're gluing your acrylic together, you want to be in a low humidity atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Your room is really humid. Your seams are all going to turn white. Really? Yeah. It suck, does it suck the moisture in as it fuses? Yeah, it's all the moisture in the air. Huh. So you want to have a low humidity. I like to keep my place at least 60% or lower. Yeah. And so I, that's why I run a dehumidifier. It sucks the water out of the air. And then, of course, I keep the house cool, too. Huh, interesting. Never knew that. That's good yeah, to know. Yeah, uh, just... I, I used to glue stuff, and it depended on the time of year. And I have stuff that would be have these white seams, and the other stuff would look crystal clear. And I was like, "What is going on?" And somebody told me, "I was like, oh, solve that problem." I just had to be told, you know. I didn't know it. There you go. You learn something every day. It's all crazy. All these little tricks, eh? Yeah. Oh, there's tons. Mm -hmm. Do I have something else I can show you guys? No. Was, do you guys? Well, I mean, our hour's up. I have you know 20 years of experience to share with you, so I'll just stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm definitely going to suck you in on a, on a future live stream for some more good stuff because you're a wealth of knowledge, good sir. I, I hide it well, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Terribly so. Um, if you guys haven't seen the guy, check out his channel, Mila's Reef. Same way, milasreef.com. Check out the website. Tons of really cool products on there as well. Um, in the chat, happy birthday, Thomas, Trini. A couple of people have their birthdays this week. Look at that. Logo. I'm sure most of you guys already know Mark. Mark's an awesome guy. I know. I just throw it out there because it's funny. <laughs> hey, and if and if you guys are enjoying it, hit that thumbs up button. Mark, where's the battle? <laughs> hey, uh, congratulations on, uh, what did you get? 10,000 subscribers? I did. 10,000 subscribers today. Woo. Hey, congratulations on that. Thank you. Much appreciated. That's a, that's, that's a huge accomplishment. Thank you. I was excited. You're making a lot of money with YouTube now, right? I wish. I make like <laughs> pennies for the amount of time I put into it. It's like... I know. And you buy so much gear. Yeah, I YouTube probably costs me money. You're it's spending terrible. more than your... You know, probably. Than your business comes in. Yeah, probably. That's, that's reality. I know. I think about it all the time. I'm like, four hours of work, real work, versus like 20 hours of YouTube in a month. I'm like, this isn't the best and plan, but no, it's fun. You make such good videos, Devin. I mean, I really enjoy them. They, they're they just... They, they're polished. They're... For the most part, they're really professional. And so that's what I really like about them. I mean, like you did that one about the Alcatronic and I was watching that video and I was like, wow, because you knew so much about it. Even as you, I mean, I don't know if you practiced the run, if you did it six times or if you had a script or whatever, nope. but you just went through it like, and my tube is going to go here and my dose, and I'm weighing this and, I, and you just, you knew the thing intimately hmm. where if it was an unboxing for me, it would have been like, oh, what's this thing? Okay. okay. <laughs> so I film, I film the unboxing like, First time, like I'm pulling out of the box or something I've ever looked at it. And then I play with it for a week or yeah. two, two weeks, whatever, a couple weeks. So I get a good hang of it. 
and then I'll yeah. film the second half of the video on how to use it just so I make sure I actually know what I'm talking about. Okay. And a lot of the time, not specifically Electronic, but like Coralbox and a lot of these other products, mm -hmm. the instructions are usually lacking or terrible. You have no idea. So mm -hmm. I, I think a good chunk of the time, I'm pretty much teaching people how to use it because instructions are useless on That's a lot of products. The video was so educational. I felt like by watching that, you'd know how to run it. Where normally a product review is mm -hmm. going to be, here's you know what I liked about it or something yeah. to that degree. But yours is way more in depth. And I... I it was sort of like watching you as if you worked for that company. And this is how we're going to build the machine today. And this is on a reef tank. And I'm going to do this. And I was like, yeah, see, it's really well done. And I was really you know, impressed with what you did. Oh, so thank you. Now, I'm not just saying polite things because all your friends are watching. <laughs> You're mighty kind. I don't know. I just try and make useful videos that are actually helping people. So that's the name of the game. I, I feel the same way about mine. You know, I mean, but mine are nearly as good as yours is the bottom line. Your, yours are that. awesome. Yours are awesome. Yours are, you have so many nuggets of good information. Full of them. I, yeah, it's that's, like that's the only thing I got on you it's is I've like, got a head full of <laughs> In the mine. I can drop little mine grenades. That's your secret, though. You just, like, pepper them throughout so that if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss all the goods. <laughs> and that's the thing. It was funny because you mentioned that because uh, it was uh, Jeff from Mad Hatter's Reef. And he mm -hmm. says, Mark has really moved away from edited videos to live streams, which I feel bad about because I kind of want to do both equally 50-50. Mm -hmm. And he said... But you need to watch the whole thing with Mark because you never know when he's going to say something you're going to wish you'd heard because it's all in there somewhere. It just isn't all like in eight minutes. It's dragged across an hour. And, you know, mm -hmm. So people tend to listen to my show while they're driving or they're working on their tank. And it's sort of like a podcast to them rather than watching mm -hmm. me sit in front of a chair just like this talking. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. I usually throw it up on the TV. I watch yours sometimes. Usually if I'm doing some tank love or something, it's perfect. <laughs> what? Yeah. What was that last part? When I give the tank some love. I heard you I heard you saying something about making love. <laughs> I, I like, love you, Reef Tank. <laughs> grow, girls, grow. Precious. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I just want to clarify. We knew what you were talking about. You guys are sneaky up there. <laughs> <laughs> sneaky, polite, and dirty. <laughs> yeah. Mage, look at them flattering each other. <laughs> that, we actually act like this off camera, too. I mean... Mm -hmm. I've actually had Devin help me over the over uh, Messenger or over FaceTime in the past, and I've mm -hmm. answered some stuff for him as well. So this is kind of how it is. It's just nice to finally get on your stream for once. I usually don't have time. Yeah. No, I didn't have time. I made time. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, buddy. All right. I will let you go and wish your mom happy birthday for me. Wish yeah. a happy birthday for yourself as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I appreciate you coming on, Mark. Everyone in the stream, thank you guys for joining today. If you haven't checked out Mark, go check out his channel. He's got an awesome channel. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, smash that like button. If you're new, subscribe. And I'll see you guys on Monday's video or next Wednesday's stream. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. All right.